confess your goodness on this first Sunday of the year 2015 we confess your mercy we say we are grateful our Lord and our God for every blessing we have received from you we are grateful for the grace to successfully complete the year 2014 and the grace to enter the year 2015 father we are grateful father we acknowledge you father we glorify you father we exalt your name as we listen to your word on this first sunday of the year 2015 we ask for the grace to receive this word in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father in Jesus powerful name we have humbly pray Amen. Amen. Amen let's be seated on this first Sunday of the year 2015 the topic of our exhortation is my year of uncommon good news Amen. my year of uncommon good news let's look at the book of Luke chapter 2 from verse 8 through 12 gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2 from verse 8 through 12 and my emphasis will be on verse 10 verse 10 says but the angel said to them do not be afraid for see I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. Hallelujah. In Equa UK this year, our watchword is 2015, my year of uncommon good news. And we are trusting God that indeed it will be a year of uncommon good news in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is a prophetic message from the Lord. That the year will be a year of uncommon good news. And as we reflect on this day, I want us to look at the original context of the passage we have read and apply it to our lives as we continue to journey along with God in 2015. The good news in this passage is an uncommon one. This year, God will work on common good news in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will work on common miracles in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will work on common blessings in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, every message must have a source. Every message must have a messenger. And every message must have a recipient. As we reflect on this special message from the Lord this year, the triune God is the source of this message. I am the messenger on this occasion, and you and I are the recipients of this message. I want to call your attention to seven important things about the good news in the passage before us luke chapter 2 from verse 8 through 12. luke chapter 2 from verse 8 through 12. there are seven important things about the uncommon good news in this passage the first is the timing of the good news the timing of the good news. Let's look at verse 8b. The Bible says, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Here, as we reflect with our sense of imagination to about 2,000 years ago, when that good news came down, we can see the timing of the good news. It was a time that was least expected. On this occasion, the good news came at night. No wonder God told Habakkuk, the vision is for an appointed time. It may tarry, but it will surely come. 
I don't know the timing of your good news. But there is a prophetic message from the Lord that this year will be a year of uncommon good news. Amen. All I know is that it has been designed for an appointed time. Your good news has been designed for an appointed time. And this year is the appointed time and season. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I can assure you that your good news is around the corner. In the name of Jesus, Amen. what we are saying here is the fact that every good news has a timing. Every good news has a timing. And the timing of your good news is on the way. And it will happen this year in the name of Jesus. Amen. The enemy likes it or not, it will happen this Amen. year. Amen. Whether household wickedness likes it or not, it will happen this Amen. year. Because the good news has a timing. The second thing is the messenger of the good news. The messenger of the good news. Let's look at verse 9a and verse 10a. The Bible says, Then an angel of the Lord stood before them. That's verse 9a. The Bible says, But the angel said to them, That's verse 10a. We can see from this passage that on this occasion, the messenger of the good news was an angel. When you look at every good news that comes, you realize the fact that there is a messenger. This year, God will send you a messenger of good news in the name of Jesus. I said God will send to you a messenger of good news in the name of Jesus. The messenger of good news may come to you this year in form of your pastor in form of your spouse, in form of your employer. You can imagine getting to work tomorrow and your employer telling you, you know what, you have been promoted. That is a messenger of good news. The messenger of the good news can be your parents. The messenger of the good news can be your children. I was with a family friend over Christmas and the woman said, see what my children bought for me for this Christmas. A messenger of the good news. I say this prophetically to your life. That this year God will send to you a messenger of the good news. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Expect a messenger of the good news. And that messenger of the good news will announce your miracles in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even your mockers shall be the announcers of your success story in 2015 in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know it is even possible for God to use your mockers, your attackers, to announce your good news. The third thing is the location of the good news. The location of the good news. Let's look at verse 8a. The Bible says in that region there were shepherds living in the field. In other words, there was a specific location attached to this good news. Every good news must have a specific location attached to it. In God's wisdom, he has decided to bless some people at certain locations. And the shepherds from this passage, they were in the right location. And because they were at the right location, that good news met them at the right location. Even when you continue with the story, you realize the fact that baby Jesus and his parents were also at the right location. No wonder when the wise men came, they were able to meet them at the right location. This year, as the Lord liveth, 
you will be at the right location to receive your good news in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say you will be at the right location to receive your good news in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The fourth thing that we see is the evidence of the good news. The evidence of the good news. Let's look at verse 9b and verse 12. Verse 9b and verse 12. Verse 9b says, And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 12 says, This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of clothes and lying in a manger. What we are trying to say here is the fact that for every good news, there is an evidence. For every good news, there must be a sign. And in this passage, we can see the first sign is the fact that the glory of God manifested. This year, the glory of God will manifest upon your life. Amen. As an evidence of the good news, everybody will say it. All eyes will say it. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the good news came with a sign. They were told specifically, you cannot miss it. When you get in there, you will see a baby wrapped in a manger. This year you will see the sign of the good news that is coming your way. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No wonder the psalmist says, give me a token of your goodness. So